Welcome to the Put Up Your Dukes podcast. I am Rob Dukes. Um, this is a special episode of the Put Up Your Dukes podcast. Uh, you guys got any questions? You got any uh, comments? You got anything you want to say to me personally? Hit me up at rob at putupyourdukespodcast.com. Now, my first guest today is uh, Megan from uh, Casket Rubbery. Fucking death metal band. They, they have a tinge of Swedish death metal and straight up Tampa death metal. And just, uh, I mean, it's fucking crazy. This, she sounds like a, a fucking monster on vocals, man. It's fucking killer. Um, and I have uh, also my second. It's about a 10 minute interview. We just talk about the Milwaukee Metal Fest and and, uh, and how she got into the band and a few other cool questions. And then we, we had a cool little conversation. Uh, my second guest was uh, uh, Charlie Belmore. He's a guitar player for Josta, uh, Kings of Liars. He, um, he's uh, he does he did all the guitaring for Deciders uh, solo records, uh, Corpse Grinder solo records. He's um, plays with Kirk Weinstein. And, uh, so, uh, fucking a well, real cool guy. He so Charlie's doing. Uh, he's like the musical director for. The Milwaukee Metal Fest. Now, if you're going to the Milwaukee Metal Fest, come at night early and on Thursday night. If you have a ticket for the weekend, if you get there a day early, there's going to be a party on Thursday night, and you're going to see myself, uh, Phil Demo, Tim Ripper Owen, Dino from Fear Factory, uh, Kirk Weinstein for Crowbar, um, Paul Bostaff, Jamie Josta. Am I missing somebody? Anyway, we're going to. We're going to play a bunch of songs. We're going to play a couple of uh, My Era Exodus songs. We're going to play uh, some covers. We're going to play some just a, a bunch of cool shit. Um, and it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a badass band, man. It's going to be, you know, a bunch of people who, uh, you know, got their, uh, you know, playing a bunch of shit you like. You know, D uh, Danny Diablo is going to be spinning metal the whole night in between. So should be a nice night of uh, metal and uh, drinking and hopefully some uh, good drugs. Um, and uh, I'll be uh, I'll be smoking cigars and uh, yeah. Anyway, this week uh, the hockey playoffs started. Uh, uh, four, I think I think all the road teams won except two. Um, it was fucking first night was great. Uh, pretty predictable. Second night, not so predictable. My Rangers fucking stomped on the Devils 5-1. So that made my night pretty good. Um, I was able to enjoy my evening. It was kind of stressful not knowing, uh, you know, whatever. Can, you know, any team can win the Stanley Cup. That's what's so killer about uh, and hockey. I know maybe some of you don't like hockey and, and you know, um, if you don't, then, uh, oh, I feel sorry for you because, uh, it's the best of the, of all the four sports. Last night, guy in Winnipeg got, here's, here's how hockey players are. I watched a guy, he got stomped on in a basketball game and they like, I don't know what they did with him, but he got a bunch of, he got in a bunch of trouble. Last night uh, in Winnipeg, uh, Baron Morgan got hit in that fucking eye with a skate. He left the ice, got 75 stitches, and then came back on the ice and played another, played the rest of the fucking hockey game. He played like 15 minutes. Dude, I, that's fucking hockey. That's playoff hockey. That is, oh, I got 75 stitches in my face. Now I'm still going to go out and, and finish the game. Um, so anyway, I had a helicopter going around my house. I live in like Chandler, Arizona, right? And I had a helicopter swirling my, not my neighborhood. And I'm like just waiting for someone to jump over the wall in my backyard and come running through. That happened once, man. I, I was at I was at work over at uh, my old job, Doug's Bugs, and I I uh, and one day I'm standing and this car comes in and woo, and this kid jumps out and he runs through my shop and jumps the back wall and this 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 fucking fat cop starts. Chase him, we got to the wall, and I was like, I don't know. And he stopped at the wall, and he ran back to his car. And uh, we found out later that he got pulled over a stolen car with a bunch of drugs in it, so he took off and ran. 
And then there was helicopters like every day around my around my shop. And uh, it happened the first time I've been uh, I sit out back at night and uh, it's beautiful out here in Arizona right now. So I sit out here. I was watching hockey and uh, smoking a cigar and uh, a helicopter growing around my house. So, oh, man, there's this great podcast. I was a guest on it uh, last month, but uh, it's called The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Bobby Kelly. It used to be Dan Soder. Dan Soder quit. Bobby Bobby Kelly took over. And uh, if you guys are looking for a good podcast list, too, that's uh, funny and and they talk about a bunch of funny shit, um, that's a good podcast. Uh, it, I've also been on Bobby Kelly's podcast one times. I did one called Two Comics, Two Cigars because... Uh, if you don't know, I, I have uh, I've done stand up comedy. Big J Okerson had a killer uh, um, comedy special come out la- a couple weeks ago called Dog Belly. Very funny. Go check it out. It's on YouTube. Just watch it for free. It's great. Uh, Bobby Kelly has a podcast called Killbox, which is on louisck.com. Um, you can go on there and and, uh, and download it. Uh, Bobby Kelly's a very funny, very good friend of mine. Him and Big J and and uh, they ruined Thin Lizzy for me, man. Um, they did. They they were talk. They were listening to um, the boys are back in town, and they started making fun of it because the lyrics are so like, man, he's catch a crazy. And they and they started making fun of it. And I was in my car and I was fucking dying. And then I went home and I listened to the song. And I was like, oh, they're right. Those lyrics are stupid and goofy. And it was just, and, uh, it, it, so, fuck Jay and Bobby, man. I, I, I never thought about it too deeply, but um, that song is ruined for me. Clutch is out on tour. I'm going to go see a great live band, one of the best live bands out there. Go check out Clutch. Um, and uh, Generation Kill is, uh, is uh, right now, our booking is trying to get us on a tour for September through October. Uh, and going out in America, coming to all the major cities. So I hope that that happens, so we can come, hang out with you guys, and then play some metal and have some have a good time. Uh, uh, as you can see behind me is my '68 Beetle. I got the pan in my garage. I'm uh, restoring it, making it a hot rod. Uh, I'm working on the pan right now. Um, it had some rust. And I didn't realize it, so I'm just changing the whole pan, and then I'm gonna powder coat the whole thing, and uh, it's gonna get new, a new beam. It's getting new tie rods. It's getting uh, everything is getting new. It's gonna have, everything is new. I'm replacing everything on it. That's about it, man. I'm looking forward to this from Milwaukee Metal Fest, man. I'm gonna be doing my podcast live. I'm gonna have a bunch of great guests. Um, the new Metallica. I haven't heard it yet. I'm gonna try and give it a listen. Uh, maybe tomorrow. I, I always try to give it an album when it comes out. I try to give it a, a good listen where I kind of shut off everything for an hour and, and, and give it a once and pay attention to it. No, no TV, no distractions. Just, you know, light a cigar and put on a record and I'll listen to it. Um, and uh, I'll let you guys know next week what I think about it. Um, I haven't read good things. Uh, a lot of people shitting on it, but then again, man, you know, a lot of times, man, like I don't read comments about me or my own shit, but I do read comments like every once in a while I'll come across comments about something else. And, 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 uh, you know, it's, um, people like to shit on things for the sake of shitting on things. So Dave Grohl came out with something new and I just saw a litany of just, this is a piece of shit. It's a piece of shit. Now, the thing about the Foo Fighters, and I love Dave Grohl. I, I, I do. As a person, I think he's an awesome human being. Uh, Foo Fighters, here's how I look at Foo Fighters. I don't uh, own any of it, but when it comes on, I don't hate it. I, I It's just kind of, it's there in the, in, the, in, the, in the, it's out there. And when I hear it, I don't hate it. But I've never purposely said, oh, let me put on some Foo Fighters. Uh, it's just not my thing. Um, I've realized that I'm old enough and I'm just going to play the music that I've listened to. You know what I mean? Like uh, old Pink Floyd and, and, uh, and, and, and old Judas Priest and, you know, um, old Iron Maiden and Clutch and some of the stuff that I like 
it's just what I go to. It, it it's comforting. Um, and some of the sometimes I'll throw on like Rain and Blood, and it'll, it'll like when I'm driving or something, and it it kind of gets me going. And and I just those things are they're just staples of my brain. And uh, I'm at an age where I don't uh, I don't listen to a lot of new shit, even though I should. Um, when I did the interview with Megan, I played some uh, casket robbery. And I was blown away. I'm like, God damn, it sounds like, like in flames or hypocrisy. It's like Swedish death metal, you know, and it it and it's good. And uh and it, but it has a time and place. You know what I mean? And that's how I think the Foo Fighters are. If I'm in a in a in a say a a, a, a say a place eating dinner and uh or a sports bar or something like that and Foo Fighters comes on, I don't hate it. I don't say, oh, this song sucks. I don't I don't but I also don't put it I don't purposely put it on. In, in that that being said, I feel like shit when I don't listen to something new. Like if I don't experience new things, um, I remember the. To be honest, I remember the first time. Um, I heard the Beastie Boys. Uh, it became a staple of my life. That band just became. I bought every record and I their whole career, and the same with Clutch. When I heard Clutch for the first time, I bought every record. I listen to the albums over and over and over again, and I know the lyrics, and I, there's plenty of bands that I do that with. And then there's some bands that I, I listen to one time, and I'm like, oh, that's good. And then for some reason, I don't ever listen to it again, unless like it pops up, and I'm like, oh. For instance, a week ago, or four days ago, my phone was on Apple Music, and it played a whole record. I've listened to ACDC, and I had a Power Age on. And what it does is when the album ends, it automatically just starts playing bands of that ilk, that it thinks that are that ilk. And it put on uh, Down. And I was like, oh, man, fucking love Down. And then I went, I got the album, and I listened to the whole album. And then I have completely forgot about it until just now that I really liked that experience of listening to something that I didn't capture the first time it came around. Um, so anyway, I don't know what my point is. I mean, my point is to maybe try something you've never listened to before or go listen to something that, uh, maybe, you know, and I'm not a fan of shitting on other people's work. I'm not. Um, you either like it or you don't. It's kind of like food. You know what I mean? Like I hate olives and I don't eat olives. And recently I've decided I don't like mushrooms either. So I'm not eating mushrooms. I think they taste like shit, especially on pizza. I just it they I, for some reason my I, they're ruined for me. I don't like them anymore. Um, like a lot like Thin Lizzy. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. Any of you guys coming out to Milwaukee Metal Fest? Uh, I'll be readily available to hang out and talk with anybody. I think they're doing a meet and greet with me, but come hang out, have a good time. Um, bring a cigar. We'll smoke a cigar together. Uh, I'm going to be there for five fucking days hanging out and, uh, and I'm looking forward to, man. It, it's going to be a lot of fun, especially Thursday is going to be a fucking blast. And, um, and that's about it, man. I'll see you guys next week. You guys are awesome. Thanks for listening. So right now I'm going to give you Megan followed by Charlie. They're both real quick interviews. Interesting. Cool. Uh, just uh, give them a listen. And at the end, I'm going to play a few songs for you people listening on Apple. There's going to be a few songs from the bands. I will talk to you next week. Have a good one. Be good to yourself. Megan. Hello. How are you? I am great. How are you? I am great. I um, in my backyard, having a cigar, and uh, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Where are you? I am in Monroe, Wisconsin right now. And it is raining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like Wisconsin. I, I actually, that's where I had the Elvis burger. It was um, I was on tour, and we were there, and it was a it was a burger. It had peanut butter and hot and jalapenos on it on a oh burger, and they called it the Elvis burger. And I was like, all right, <laughs> we got that curry cheese thing. Like we they took that and we brought that oh, off the yeah. pub. Were you happy? Yeah, I have a I have a, a a band from that area that I know 
called Hong Kong Sleepover. Are you aware of those guys? No. I'll, 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 you should. They're, uh, you're probably like Motorhead. They're like Motorhead ish. And they're very cool guys, and uh, I sang on their I sang on their last record, and they and they did a little a little cameo. Yeah, they're cool guys. Um, so I listened to your band, um, and you guys are fucking brutal, <laughs> brutal. Thank you. It's so a, it's so funny seeing you here and knowing what you sing like <laughs> is, yeah. it's uh, it's fucking insane. Yeah. <laughs> You remind me of Peter from Hypocrisy. Your cousin. Oh, rad. Well, when, uh, yeah, you guys are very, very cool. Lyrics are very dark, but not cheesy. Very cool. And uh, I'm a fan. I can't wait to see you in Milwaukee, man. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to be there watching you guys for sure. Oh, thank uh, you so much. That means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I saw you guys are doing, you're doing that show, uh, the Milwaukee Metal Fest. Mm -hmm. Um, which day are you playing? You playing Sunday? Sunday, okay. Yeah, cool. I leave Monday, so I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, so I'm there for the entire thing. Right. And, uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. So let me let me ask you, how did you, how did you start singing death metal? Like, how did you approach it? I I grew up just singing, um, everywhere that I really could. And then before Casket, I about, I don't know, like six years before that, I joined a a metalcore band where I kind of did clean vocals and harsh vocals. And I progressively wanted to get heavier and heavier and, and go even more harsh with stuff. And, and the technique that I used to do mine um, just didn't really... It didn't fit the, our, our metalcore vibe a whole lot. And Casket, um, their vocalist left. And there was, like, I think the second tour that they did um, was, like, a little over a month. And we had, like, two months to prep. And Corey was like, hey, will you fill in for Casket? And I was like, well, I haven't ever done, like, full harsh vocals the whole time. But, yeah, I'd love to. And so I did that and just fell in love and immediately kind of just knew Casket was where I was supposed to be. And, and that's it. <laughs> cool. Red, um, so did you struggle, uh, live doing show after show after show? Did you guys, did you, have, did you personally struggle with, uh, not losing your voice and learning the technique to, to not lose your voice? I didn't. I I took a lot of lessons before okay. um, with Mary Zimmer. She had been working at, with me um, since the get-go with my vocals when I even started doing them. And the thing that killed me the first tour was I got bronchitis two days before we left. Yeah. And it was good for me because I kind of learned how to treat my vocals on the road. Um, I didn't talk at all for two weeks and i'd get on stage do that like the boys would do the banter um and then i would go to the bus and sleep and so that for two whole weeks that the bands that we toured with didn't even know what my voice sounded like um they would jump <laughs> one of them was like one band was from australia so one of the girls was like i just imagine you having this australian accent since i haven't heard you speak before um, that was the biggest thing for me, but I think it was also the best thing for me because I, I kind of learned how to, how to treat my vocal cords on the road and, and not struggle a whole lot. Yeah. I, uh, I got lucky. I had, um, I got a strep throat in the middle of tour with Creator cool. in South America and, um, my uvula had, was it all swollen and I had all the white dots and. Uh, luckily, the hotel we were at was the also the Brazilian uh, soccer team, and the doctor actually came to my room and injected my throat with steroids, and I got through the last two shows. Oh um, but, but like you, know, I didn't I didn't talk in between. I just did the show, and then I went right to my room and I slept, and you know, uh, tried to avoid everybody. And yeah, that was that was brutal. But yeah, 
Yeah, Twine can be a fucker like that. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. And you never know when it's going to hit you because usually, you know, being on a bus, everybody gets sick and then, you know, everybody casts it to everybody. And then just when you think it's over, it fucking goes around again. Or, yeah, I've been. Yeah. Europe is, uh, we had, we were out towards Sepultura and the same thing happened. Oh, everybody got sick in both bands. And it was just, I was singing with a bucket, a garbage can next to the microphone because I was puking into the. Yeah. <laughs> that was our recent tour. We tour plague went around. We all we all had problems with it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um so how many it just, cycled. It, it just cycled through the whole bus and then Yeah. Yeah. Um what are your tour plans after yeah, are you trying before Milwaukee or is that in the middle of it or is that just two one off shows? Um Milwaukee's just our two our one off show for us, so that's nice. Okay have touring plans this summer and then this fall that we haven't announced yet. Um, and then some festivals that we're playing kind of weaving into those. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to Europe? I want to go to Europe. Uh, <laughs> not, not, uh, uh, so far, not this year. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. But that is that is the plan. Okay. Yeah. Europe's fun. It's uh, interesting. Uh, That's what I hear. The, uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you're away from home, so it's kind of cool. And then there's the, there's, you know, be, do you, uh, are you married? Do you have kids? I mean, just married. Well, just married. Okay. So it's not that bad. You, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I guess uh, I always, like when I was uh, touring, when I was on tour with Exodus and, um, you know, Lee had small children and it was always rough to watch him miss his kids and stuff but uh yeah but i was married in the time when i was touring europe and it was like a good break from my my uh, other uh person you know uh <laughs> yeah I, play it. mine is my guitar player so yeah. i we just do it together so we're kind of stuck <laughs> so um is that uh is that breed uh is it bring you guys closer you think or is it is it ever been a wedge or is it always just been okay i think it's been a, a really big learning experience that we're still kind of navigating it's because you gotta have those really good boundaries um because we treat this and we're so serious and it's pretty much me and him that do all of the business side of this band um we have to know when to like throw that line down and be like okay we need to not talk about the band for uh, for a night, which never happens. But <laughs> um, oh. yeah, it's just we're kind of constantly learning. <laughs> but yeah, it's you know, definitely brought us closer. Uh, you know, I find it like being in a band, which for me was like, and it still is. You know, uh, it's like being in a marriage with five people, and there's yep. you, you. Every relationship has its. You know, I have a different relationship with every person in the band. Uh, Yep. And to get everybody on the same page and you know sometimes oh, sorry about that uh sometime there is uh conflict and it, yeah. it's uh and it's not it's not even like uh it's a shitty conflict it's just two different ideas trying to come together to and compromise can be a motherfucker sometimes and you know um but when you're in your situation you're like you know do you find that the band writes the music. Do you write the lyrics or do you write do. or yeah. Okay. So so when you write the so like I don't know if you've grown into this, but I'll, I'll tell you from my experience. Um it's it's your vision and you're writing it on paper and you put it down and then someone else has this idea and it's it's not that you're offended, but it's like, why don't you go write your own song and leave me alone? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean to be a dick, but that's what it, that's, and it's hard to compromise that and not be an asshole to that person, but it's like, whoa, hey, you know, um, and I've said to my band, hey, if you got lyrics, give them to me, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, if they're cool, they're, if they work, they work. Yeah. But as a singer, you're also trying to, you, you, the first thing you're doing is the melody and then the, the, you know, and then the, the lyric and the idea comes, I, some, I, you know, I'm, I'm constantly writing ideas down or if I hear something 
even a sentence, I'll put it in my memo on my phone. And yeah. then when I sit down to write lyrics, you have all these ideas, you write them down. Because coming up with the idea for the song sometimes is the most difficult part, right? It's yeah. like naming a band. Naming a yeah. band, that's the hardest thing. And you guys get a great name. I mean, Kelsey <laughs> Robert. Bosh. That's that. <laughs> Dude, that's such a good name. Yeah. Um. Anyway. So do you do? Is that is that how it is for you? Like you keeping that balance with everybody? Yeah, it is, and it. I've I've been in that situation, and especially early on, it was hard to not get like even have that little ego like getting offended or being like, "Hey, what would? How about we change this line to this?" And then I'll be like, "That completely doesn't make sense in what I'm trying to write about right now. What are you talking? About? Like, no." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ego, ego, I think that's the, the two things that kill a band, ego and yeah. drugs. And drugs yeah. is the other one. Um, those yeah. two things are are can really destroy a band from the inside. And Holy uh, and then again, the Rolling Stones have been around forever. Saying, yeah. the, fuck, what the, the fuck do I know? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, Milwaukee Metal Fest, do you, who you're who you, you playing that day, that's uh, Lamb of God. Yeah. Right? That's yep. the headliner that day. That's fucking yep. killer. Who else, who else is that day? Uh, hey, um, I'm back. All right. Yeah. Um, Sanguis Sigabog. I just really like saying as many times as I can. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to see them. Yeah. <laughs> Here. Well, yeah, there's a lot. what they'll do is, what they'll do is that day, I'm doing my podcast live that day. Oh, uh, so, so at some point, um, I think what they're going to do is there's going to be like a little space set up for me. And what I'd have to do is have your, your entire band come by and, and say hi and talk for a few minutes. And, and then uh, we'll put, you know, at the end, I think I'm going to put together like a little like video of the whole weekend. And, and uh, I'd love to have you guys a part of it. Yeah. Um, we would love I'm, we're, yeah. I'm really excited to see you guys. You guys you sound amazing. So, you know, all these people, you guys are going to Mocking Weather Fest. Listen to them before you go. Be familiar with the music. It's fucking rad. It's uh, dark and <laughs> and heavy and not silly. And you're, you know, I mean, you have this this little angelic talking voice. But when you <laughs> sing, goddamn, you know, you make, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an awesome thing. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I look forward to seeing you at Milwaukee Metal Fest. Um, it's going to be a f really fun weekend. And uh, it was really nice talking with you. And I'll see you in, at the end of May. I'm stoked. Thank you so, so much for having me on. You're welcome. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Hey, everybody, this is a Put Up Your Dukes podcast. I uh, My guest today is uh, Charlie Belmore. So, um, Tell me about yourself. Tell, you know, let me, uh, look who you play with and who you are and what you do. And, oh God, I, uh, uh, I'm a guitar player. I've been playing with, uh, Jamie Jasta in his solo band Jasta for like, uh, I think since 2006, seven or something like that. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, um, and we've also, I've, I'm also a guitar player for his other band with Kirk Winstein, King Massaro. I'm the lead guitar player for that band. Um, I wrote the two uh, D. Snyder records that Jamie did. Uh, I co-wrote them with Jamie, uh, for the love of metal and, um, hmm. leave a scar. Uh, I played and wrote, uh, a bunch of the, the new Ripper album, Return to Death Row. Uh, I played and wrote a song or two on the Corpse Grinder CD. Uh, um, that was, that was a good one, man. I, I mean, I like all your work so far, but. Um, the Corpse Grinder one was fucking, I, I was actually, I was like, all right, I didn't know what to expect. And then I was like, wow, this is fucking rad. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. the, D, the D Snyder stuff was cool. was great too. And, and, and Joss is awesome. And all the, all the stuff you guys do, um, everything so far. Um, so like you do a lot of work in the studio. Yeah. I, I get to play out as much as I can. Um, you know, I have, I have another, I have a band, uh, me and my brother who play does all the Jasta stuff and the bass player who does all the Jasta stuff we have a band called Kings and Liars we wow. at least we released a record last year called Transition Animals you, know, you went out with uh, you went out with my boy Opus you guys did a little tour oh yeah right? yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and your brother actually uh, 
Nick actually mixed uh, and produced half of the Generation Kill record. He actually mixed the whole thing, but Zeus had started it and couldn't finish. So your brother came in and saved the day and finished the whole uh, MK Ultra album and my album. And I, so I got to work with your brother, who's just an awesome dude and and very uh, very good at, at produce and you know at engineering and mixing. And, and uh, he was awesome. Well, yeah, he's really coming to his own in the last like ten years. It's just uh, every time he does a record. I want to brag about, I want to tell everybody how awesome it is. And I'm like, I'm not trying to be biased because he's my brother, but Jesus Christ, can you, can you hear this production? <laughs> well, it sounds, yeah, dude. I mean, I actually, uh, you know, he, um, when I, I, I did, I, I did, I knew about him, but I, I didn't know him. And then Zeus uh, said, Hey man, I got a guy that'll fucking kill it for you. And, uh, you know, Zeus in the middle of the Rob Zombie thing. So he had to kind of step aside and choke on Nick walked in and just, Within three days, man, we were like blown away. We're like, all right, cool, we're do- we're in. You know, the first <laughs> things we were earning on. So, yeah. So, Milwaukee Metal Fest is coming up. Yes, it is. We get to hang. We're actually, are we actually going to play together? You know yes, I mean? we will be. Yes, we will be. All right. I'm, uh, <clears throat> um, me and the bass player Chris, we're we'll be the only two guys that'll be on stage the entire uh, set. So, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what song, like I'm gonna tease out the songs. There's like a handful of songs floating around. We're gonna we're gonna t- try to tackle some uh, my era Exodus, um, and uh, we've thrown out a bunch of songs. The fans have spoken and stole their piece, and uh, but it's it's really comes down to uh, you know if we can get it together uh, in time, which you know we get a, a little bit of time to work it out, which is which is cool. But uh, it'll be fun, man. It's gonna be a really fun night. The Thursday before. If you have a ticket to the festival any day, you can get into that free and come see. So it'll be uh, myself, Phil Demo, Dino from uh, Fear Factory. You got Ripper. You got you, you Ripper. And uh, Josta is going to be singing. And we're all going to, we're going to just do a bunch of songs and, and have our fucking party. Kirk Winstein will be up there doing a couple things. And then, oh, yeah, Crowbar. Yeah. And then, and then at some point we'll have uh, uh, Paul Bostaff from Slayer come up and crank out some Slayer tunes as well. Wow, cool, man! Right. Um, and then uh, Danny Diablo is going to be spinning uh, the DJ all night. He'll be the DJ for the party, and then it'll be like just a a fun hangout night, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the looking forward to the whole weekend. But that night's going to be special. So for the yeah. fans, if you can get out a day early, man, that's the day to to come out and check that party well, out. It's gonna it's gonna be goddamn fun. I already started getting texts, you know, because I'm, um, you know, I have, I'm like the musical director for for Jamie, so you know, I've probably put together like I don't know, like five versions of the Josta band, or maybe even more at this point. <laughs> but even even one band I put together, I wasn't in because I was on tour with the Toxic Holocaust at the time. I was playing guitar. Okay. For- and, I love uh, those bands. You've been up there. Oh, those guys are great. Yeah, my bro- my my brother played drums on a couple of those records, and then yeah. Joel the si- Joel the singer just called me one day, and he was like, "Dude, I don't want to play guitar anymore. I want to play bass live, and I want somebody to do like the end of Paradise City guitar solos the whole time." And, for, and I was like, "Okay, I can do that." <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but yeah, I I've been the music director since like the word go, and um. So I'm, you know, we're already, we have to, we have to do the whole, we're doing the whole Jasta set. Um, I begged everybody like, Hey, listen, even if you're not playing a song, can you just please learn it? So I, so like, you know, me and the other guys could pl- like practice it, you know, for, for throughout May when we jam and stuff. Cause I just, uh, <clears throat> I, I just drilled a, I just drilled the hell out of everybody. Um, you know, yeah. I, I'm a, a music director <laughs> and, yeah. uh, but I got, uh, I got uh, Joey. Uh, he plays in a thousand bands now. He's always touring. Um, him and Randy, the band names he's in because he's so busy. And uh, 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 Chris from the Josta Band and from Kings of Liars and Kingdom of Sorrow. And then I have uh, uh, Nick Petrino, who is who I got for the the D Snyder Live Band. He's going to be the second guitar player for most of the set. Okay, <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah. you, how's your brother? Uh, real sidetrack. How's your brother's back doing? Yeah, is he doing all right? Yeah, he's he's doing better. They uh, we 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 played a couple of shows at Kings and Liars, and uh, you know we play slower. <laughs> so right. it's, uh, 
he felt pretty good. And I said, hey, do you want to, you want to do this? Because after we do the Josta, the next day or two days later on Saturday, we're playing with uh, River Owens. Uh, we're, you know, we're the backup band. And he just said, I don't know, like the set's going to be like an hour and a half or something. And I'm just real worried right. that I'm going to be like all beat up. And then I'm going to be like not able to perform at 110% for Ripper, who deserves to have 110%. And I just said, okay, all right, don't worry about it. You know, and I checked with Joey before I, uh, you know, I checked with Joey on drums before I, I said no to my brother. And then he, he luckily, he's about, he, he goes out on a tour like a week or two after this. So, um, Everything kind of slid in under the wire, so I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked about it. Cool, man. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to this, dude. I mean, I, I'm redoing my uh, live podcast uh, there um, with a litany of guests, and uh, you know, um, it, it should be fun. I'll probably do some long form ones for my for my podcast, maybe like after the show or before the show during the day, and, and try to uh, oh, do nice. some long ones. But uh, mostly just. You know, trying to get everybody there, talking about it, and film as much as I can. I'm gonna uh, bring a couple of cameras with me and film uh, parts of live sets, and uh, you know, um, try to get some audio to to go with it, and and just uh, to go with the interviews and try to make it kind of cool. And uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it, dude. Um, so, what do you do besides being a dad? What do you do when you're not doing music? You got any hobbies? Got any uh, anything other than that? Um, honestly, I mean, b besides just kind of bit like I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little behind. I still collect them, but I'm a big comic book nerd. And then I just, I love, I just love movies and shit like that. So I'll, right. It, it's now it's like, I barely have any time to watch anything, but I'll like watch, you know, I, I just, I just love all, all sci-fi shit. So I'll watch a lot of that kind of stuff. And, uh, uh Star Wars nerd. Uh, no, Star Trek. Okay. Star Trek. You went the other way. All right, I'm a Star oh, Wars nerd. My, oh. my my parents my parents got married in '76, and their honeymoon was a Star Trek convention. So it was kind of no, I was so. I was I was raised I was raised the Trekkie. <laughs> oh man, there's a there's a fucking documentary about Trekkies. Yeah, guys like you. Uh, I've seen it. Yeah, man, it's uh yeah, bunch of fucking weirdos. Not like Star Wars nerds. You are probably the biggest weirdos on the planet. You know. I, I always I always say the people the people that uh, the Star Wars nerds are the greatest people in the world because they every single pr product that comes out they're like this is the worst fucking thing that's ever come out in the history of Star Wars and then like three years later you'll say yeah like that other shitty thing you know like something that they praised two years ago and they're like don't you ever make fun of that that's the greatest thing they ever made <laughs> yeah. Totally. They all it's shit the on funny as thing in the world. Yeah, they they shit on Jar Jar Binks, but they have three of them. You know, one in a box and two they played with. You know what I mean? So, oh, I mean, I yeah. I'm a um um I I enjoyed like the original trilogy, like every other sci-fi nerd in the world. But, yeah. Um. Yeah. Like when um you know it was it was basically right but right before the pandemic. But I had just gotten off a tour with D and. My baby was about to be born at the end of 2019, and so that Mandalorian show came on, and I'm like, this is great, because it's just, like, in the world, and I got none of the people in it. I don't have to worry yeah. about the force, and I don't have to worry about this shit and that shit. Yeah. I just got this guy flying around doing a weekly adventure. You know, it was like fucking, yeah. it was like Magnum V.I. in space, you know? Like, you just do it. was cool, thing. well, yeah, so being a, a total Star Wars nerd, they had books that were, like, uh, like, part of the universe they were they were um they were recognized by lucas but they weren't a part of the story he was writing and then yeah. all this expanded universe and the, the mandalorian story was fucking crazy i mean it was really good it was a three book series and it was about boba getting his the moment that he comes out of the pit of sarlacc and he comes out of the pit he kills it and then he climbs out with no army he, he had to um his armor burned off uh being in the stomach and he got out and then he had to uh, come back and get new armor and shit like that. It was a great story. But uh, in the verse, first episode of Mandalorian, they brought IG-11, which, you know, in the in the expanded universe, IG-88 was like this badass character who you only see in Empire for a few seconds, and then he's dead in Return. But his story was fucking amazing, and that was kind of one of the, all the things oh, I, I liked. I had no idea about that. 
Yeah, and, and Favreau did a real good job about bringing that character, and now he's in the new one. And I'm I'm a huge fan of the Mandalorian. I, I I've watched it twice, and I uh, yeah. So, um, but I was a Star Wars. My dad was a Star Trek guy. He had. We, we, I used to build models when I was a kid. My dad built the 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 Enterprise, and I had that hanging in my room. Uh, I mean, and uh, yeah, and then like he, I remember we the first Exodus video I ever shot was uh, "Now the Death They Come," and we shot it where Kirk fought the Green Lizard guy. We went to the same location with the rocks that are like weird. Oh yeah, and worn. Yeah, <laughs> and we yeah, and we. Uh, we shot the video there specifically because that's where Kirk fought the green guy. And we thought it was kind of cool. And it was right near LA. And we're like, all right, let's just go shoot it there. And we, I, that's where we shot the. I just, I love the like, just like the random craziness of old school sci fi where it's like every, they just drove like 20 minutes out of LA and <laughs> this, yeah. this will be a planet. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like how they, to make an alien, they just put like a weird suit on him with some green shit on his face and fucking oh, he's from fucking yeah, and, yeah, uh, and yeah, it was it was a you know, Carol Burnett uh yeah. gave the money to to make that show happen. No, it was actually Lucille Ball. Oh, Lucille Ball, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Lucille yeah. Ball made gave them the money to make that show. It only lasted right. a couple of years, right? Yeah, the they, original show. Yeah, I think it was only uh, four seasons. I think. Okay. I, I, I grew up. You know, my parents loved it, but I was born in 81, you know, so, like, but, you know, by the time I was, like, realized what was even happening, like, the movies had already started, and, like, you know, I was I was probably, like, realizing what was going on with the world, like, you know, when, like, as they call it, the one with the whales was already out, you know, and so I'm just yeah. like, oh, these guys are fun, and they're hanging out with whales, all right, this is cool, and then <laughs> when the next generation started, that was, like, my, that was my shit, like, I'm, um... It's it's just it's just fantastic. Well, yeah. well, I'm sure all the metalheads out there listening to this uh, are either uh, they're either completely engrossed in this because I've I've heard from a lot of people. It's weird, man. I went to Japan and I got like I got so many gifts from fans, Star Wars stuff that I couldn't yeah. get in America, and it, because they they like it's like metalheads truly care about like uh, nerdy shit. You know what I mean? Because you know. Yeah, I was so I was doing interviews for my Kings and Liars record, and I mentioned to some guy that I was a big comic book fan, and he just like asked me, and I was like, he goes, "How much of a comic book fan are you?" I don't know if you're a comic book fan at all, but uh, I am, yeah. And uh, do you like the X Men at all? I do. Um, I was more um, Image Comics, so I was oh, more like uh, if, yeah, if you look, that if you look behind me. That see that picture up there? Yeah, that's. That's say like one of twenty five, uh, the the max hand drawn by. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. So I'm um I'm I'm I right there with it. I was into uh, uh Team Seven, and yeah. then um well what was the man I have the whole series I have I own the whole series. What was the guy that came from Team Seven? Um, Blood. Fuck, my brain is going blank. He had a whole series like twenty six, and I have all twenty six. He was a, a a mercenary who started to get a conscience, and then he only killed the bad guys after that. Let's forget yeah. it. Uh, blood. So I did something blood. There's there's so many there were so many bloods yeah. in the nineties. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, yeah. but uh, well, that was so that was that was the stuff that I was into. I was more into that. I never forget. I had a um, an Iron Man book when I was a kid, and the back of it had this short story, and it was about. Sergeant Rock, and they had this crazy story about this guy who uh, he he was he was um, he got put he got he he was in a prisoner, and they brainwashed him. They kept sending him back into battle, but he was actually just sitting in a bed, and he actually uh, had to keep going to war over and over and over again. And he threw himself under a tank and crushed his skull. And then when he come out, he was he was like retarded. He was sitting in a bed just drooling, and that's how he got out of going. That was the little short story, and for then on, I just always kind of gravitated toward the war ones, like uh, you know what I mean, like World War Two. So that's where I was at. But anyway, but um, oh, to go back to my point, I was, I was doing an interview, and I just met, I was like, oh, I'm a big comic book fan, and the guy was like, oh, you are, you know, I can't remember, he was, he was from like uh, Norway or something, and I was like, yeah, I go, I go, I'm such a comic book fan, my daughter is named Ileana Magic, 
and um and then all of a sudden he just like freaks out and he's like from the new mutants and i was like yes <laughs> and like and all and then like the, for there was like there was like three or four months where i was just getting i would just get random stuff from you know fans of like the x-men and yeah. it's like uh, like online just like check this out and i'm like oh my yeah. god it's so cool i wore a shirt i wore a shirt on tour that's how fans are awesome that way i wore a shirt and they said hand shot first and <laughs> from then on I would get, I have, I mean, I have boxes of just stuff that fans gave me. I mean, uh, one fan gave me a, 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 a sweatshirt that was, I mean, it was maybe $120, $30, and it was a um, a Boba Fett sweatshirt. And I wore that shit for years and years, and uh, I still have it hanging in my closet. I live in Arizona now, so I don't need it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, man, you know, it was always just the, the kindness of fans, and they nerded out just as much as I did, so. And uh, yeah, I I always say that like, I mean I mean heavy heavy metal especially, and then also musicians like, we really are, we don't want to admit it, but like, I mean even like fucking like, doesn't matter it doesn't matter how cool the dude looks, they're a giant nerd like like totally. there's no there's no way like Slash or Noodle Bentoncore got that good at guitar without being the biggest geeky motherfucker in the planet just staring at their guitar going do 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 yeah and you yeah. gotta be so nerdy to do that stuff i spent i spent my high school years just sitting in my room playing guitar that's what i did i i went to school i played guitar i i didn't get laid till i was 18 i didn't even i i like girls but i like i just didn't chase them until i could play and you know what i mean and that's how i just i was just so nerdy and such a dork uh and uh yeah, my girl. Um, oh, I actually met her like in elementary school, like in second or third grade or something. And oh, we cool. we, re we reconnected just a few years ago. And she was like, "Why didn't you like? Why didn't you ask me out in high school?" And I was like, "Cause I was fucking busy learning how to play the guitar." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You didn't." I was like, "You didn't have tabs for Dyer Z. That's why I didn't talk to you." <laughs> well, well, we're new tabs yet. Yeah, yeah, there were no sound. We had to we had to use our old record player that could slow things down to sixteen. Did you have one of those? Remember the at seventy eight, yeah, uh, sixteen and and whatever regular it is. But I remember slowing things down to learn them. Yeah, you know. Anyway, um, so we nerded out. So well, cool, man. Well, look, I'm really stoked that we uh, are gonna get to play together. You know. Um, yeah, me too, man. We're gonna pick. So we're gonna pick two or three really cool songs and fucking have a blast. And uh, no matter what we pick from my era, Exodus, man, it's gonna be fucking heavy as fuck. So, you know. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a blast, and the whole the whole show is gonna be a blast. We got all those people coming. Lots you're gonna hear everything. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of cool covers. A lot of I mean, I always like to go like deep cover, like uh, side B last track. You know what I mean? That's my always. That's where I always go over covers. And uh, when I'm in Generation Kill, that's what we do, man. We pick up like the last, the, the songs that like the band never plays anymore. Those are the ones we play. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to doing that, man. I'm I'm looking forward to hang out with you in Milwaukee. And uh, are you? How many are you gonna be here all three days, or are you just gonna be there? Uh, I'll, I'll get there on Wednesday, and I'll be flying home at some point on Sunday. So I'll be there the whole time. Okay, cool, man. Well, I'm sure we're gonna hang out. Um, hang out. I smoke cigars and hang out. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. Just hang out with people. So come by. I'll have you come by in the podcast. We'll talk some more Star Wars, Star Trek, and comic book shit. And um, yeah, man, and stay in touch. And and like, I'm gonna show up Wednesday, and you let me know what songs, and I'll uh, show up and try to remember the lyrics. <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely, I'll have everybody drilled. So we'll be, we'll be tight as hell for you. All right, cool, man. Well, Charlie, it was awesome talking to you, man. Uh, this is going to come out tomorrow. Um, I'm going to, it's going to be a dual podcast. Uh, you with the, um, uh, Megan from Cascade Robber, and then we're going to have both. So is there any songs you want me to put on the end? Um, what song do you want me to play? I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to add, so like if you go on Spotify, there'll be three tracks at the end uh, after the after the podcast. Um, and so go ahead and give me one song that you want to hear. Uh, any band, your band, any band, I don't care. Honestly, I want I want you to play um, uh, the Reckoning by B. Snyder because 
D decided not to go on tour after we released Leave a Scar, and that song is heavy as fuck. And Okay. All right. That's the one I'll play in The Reckoning on the D side of record. All right, dude. Listen, man. Uh, good talking to you. Uh, and I look forward to hanging out. You and uh, in Milwaukee, man. We're going to have a blast. Sounds so. good, man. All right, bud.